looking for a message this morning titled New Heaven and a New Earth and making everything new. A new heaven and a new earth and making everything new. Revelation 21, 1, 5 and 6. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. Verse 5, he was seated on the throne, said, I am making everything new. Verse 6, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There are two realities, heaven and earth, <coughs> spiritual as well as material. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. When we pray, as in the Lord's Prayer, we pray that God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our secular society, particularly beginning from the age of reason or the age of enlightenment, tells us that there is only one reality, and that is the physical or the material world in which we live. Dr. Jordan Peterson, however, argues that it is not clear that the category that the categories given to us by our senses, or those abstracted out for us by the processes of scientific investigation, constitute the most real or even the most useful models of apprehending the fundamental nature of being or experience. It appears instead, says Peterson, that the categories offered by traditional myths and religious systems might play that role, despite this being a very unpleasant suggestion to our modern sensibilities. We think that we live in the objective world, but we do not, says Jordan Peterson. This does not mean that the objective world is real, is not real, even though theories about its nature are in constant flux. What it does mean is that the environment of human beings might well be regarded as spiritual as well as material. In fact, says Peterson, the radical claim is that we live in the world that is more fundamentally spiritual rather than material. That is so because God who is spirit is the source of all life and we cannot understand the material and the physical universe without reference to God who is spirit. I offer these comments from Peterson's research simply encourage us in our faith that what we believe as Christians has solid and credible foundations and not simply something that belongs to our creative imaginations. That his faith in God is not for religious fanatics but for religious nuts, but it is the very basis for understanding and living out our daily lives as human beings in the world which God has created. Not that we need Peterson and others to justify our faith. But what Peterson and others have stumbled across is really the way things have always been, as attested to by Holy Scripture. The problem that we are encountering today is that our modern world is trying to shut down the reality of the spiritual by saying that what is real is only that that belongs to our material and physical world. But what does a world that is primarily focused on the physical and the material look like? It would be a world that focuses on things and objects, rather than on our <coughs> interpersonal relationship with God and with one another. It would be a world driven by economics and the acquisition of money and physical resources as the basis for defining how successful we are as individuals and as a nation. We often forget, however, the important fact that nothing lasts forever. 
All living things will die. Even material things will decay and eventually turn into dust. It is no wonder why our modern societies are so focused now on climate change. The attempt to save the planet. It has suddenly dawned on us that our planet has a shelf life. That it will come to an end one day and so that we might, we might better look after it now. Extinction Rebellion, some of you may have heard of, is a movement to try and stop our planet and human beings from becoming extinct. On their website it says, The truth. We are facing an unprecedented global emergency. Life on Earth is in a crisis. Scientists agree of our making. We are called to act now, says the website. We are unprepared for the danger our future holds. We face floods, wildfires, extreme weather, crop failure, mass displacement and the breakdown of society. The time for denial is over. It is time to act. Conventional approaches of voting, lobbying, petitions and protest have failed because powerful political and economic interests prevent change. Our strategy is therefore one of non-violent Destructive civil disobedience, a rebellion, says the website. I think that we can rebel as much as we like, but it will not stop the process of death from happening. Death is built into creation. We are born to die. That is, the moment we are born, we are heading towards death. Let's look at our own personal lives. You can look after your body as much as you like. That is, you can eat all the right foods, exercise daily and get plenty of rest and sleep, etc. But the blunt reality is you're still going to die. Of course it is important to still look after our bodies, eating well and doing exercise and so forth not trying to deny the importance of these things. But the reality is, we're still going to die. Death, because of sin, is inbuilt into creation. So what this highlights is that if we are to live on past death, then we must look to another reality. We must look to the heavenly or to the spiritual realm for understanding in this regard. If our problem in terms of death was purely a physical or a material one, then the solution could be found in our material and physical world. But because the root of the problem is not physical as such, but spiritual, then we must look for the solution in the spiritual realm. Paul in Romans 8, 20 to 22, highlights this reality regarding creation as a whole. And this is an important chapter, Romans chapter 8. Verse 24 says, For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Yes, creation is in bondage. Creation is groaning. But the solution is not simply about how we look after our planet, though important and necessary. The solution to our problem is not how we look after the problem as such. It is primarily a spiritual matter. It is about our relationship with God. The solution to our world problems is not physical and, and a practical one, it is primarily a spiritual one. It is why God comes to us in Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. As you know, we cannot save ourselves. We cannot arrest the process of death. We cannot save the planet by human knowledge, by human strength. Alone. The good news of 
the gospel is that God comes to us. God comes to us to save us, including creation as a whole. Reconciliation with God includes the reconciliation of creation as a whole. Our hope is not in our human efforts as such, but our hope is in God alone, who is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. The one who said, I will make everything new. The emphasis here in the word, I, referring to Christ, I will make everything new. God will make everything new. God will bring into being, or God will institute a new heaven and a new earth. Those two realities will become one in the future. That is the good news. God comes to us to save not only us as human beings, but has come to save and to reconcile creation as a whole to Him, in and through Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So may we continue to look to Him for our faith and our hope for the present and the future. Amen.